Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm Jeffrey and in this video I'm going to take you through the different type of notes that make up my digital mind system. In the previous video you can watch a demo of me crafting an evergreen note. We're going to see a lot of these notes in action. Now there's a lot of interconnectedness between all these different style of notes. So I'm going to try and go through it in an order that makes the most sense as we work our way through the system. But if you want to see it in action, go check the previous video where I demo crafting an evergreen note. Now, the reason why I want to go through this is not only to show a little bit of the structure of my system, but also talk about the reasons why each of these different notes exist. So let's dive in to the first one, which is the reference note. Now, the reference note is there to ensure traceability to the source information that I consumed. If I want to go back and reread or pull some additional context, I have the traceability from my ideas all the way back to where they came from. And it's also a holding area for literature notes. So let's, let's open up an example here in the sidebar of these seven rules for staying productive long term by Scott Young. So you can see I have it as a page filled with content. A lot of the other notes are just going to be blocks with sub bullets underneath them, whereas the reference note is a page in and of itself. And it contains the metadata for that note, who the author was, title, URL, back to the source. Also pull out some quotes that I might want to reuse. And then you can see all these sub bullets here, which are the literature notes that I wrote and have processed from this piece of content, as well as all the highlights that I took. So it's linked the reference note to the literature notes, as well as to any other kind of metadata such as as author. So now let's take a look at literature notes, which are the raw material for my digital mind. It's the information that I have summarized into my own words. It could also be random thoughts and ideas that I have, which I will capture and kind of build as literature notes to be processed later on. So it doesn't always have to pertain to something that I consume. Now the structure for this, it's a block with plain text and it has a couple features to be able to use within the queries to be able to process it throughout my system. So it needs to have this little note emoji as well as a link to a key word, which we'll talk about in a second. So it is linked back to those reference notes as children, as well as also being pulled into the children of evergreen notes as I crystallize them. So let's take a look at then the keywords that I use when I am writing my literature notes. So keywords are my current interests and projects that I'm working on. The kind of group related literature notes together, rather than having, you know, a lot of literature notes all kind of mishmashed together and being queried all at once, it kind of separates them into buckets to make them easier to see potential connections to go ahead and process them together. And the other thing that keywords do is it groups related maps of content together. So a keyword is a page that contains all of the related notes together. It contains those maps of content and it contains a query for literature notes. It's a child of my homepage and it has, it is the parent of the maps of content. So that's a lot of information, but it's actually pretty simple. So if we take a look at my homepage, you can see that I have a keyword index here with all the different keywords that I will use when I write the literature notes. So we'll kind of direct it to one of these different pages. And then if I open up, say, the personal knowledge management page, you can see that these are the different maps of content notes, which we'll talk about shortly. But it also has the query for the literature notes, which is looking for that little note emoji plus the keyword for those notes. And then it pulls those in so that I can process them into evergreen notes. And then on this page underneath these maps of content, all of the different notes are also stored under here. So these keywords are kind of the master pages, the master repositories for my digital mind system. And so then that leads into the next type of note, which is the map of content. 
So what the map of content does is it creates a kind of hierarchical structure for related evergreen notes. Rather than just having them a big long list of evergreen notes, it kind of puts them into buckets based on related topics, ideas, themes. So I can more easily narrow in on finding the thing that I want to, to find. It is a block with a link to an empty page. So what do I mean by that? If I look back at my personal knowledge management, if I look at this uh, map of content here for PKM design, you can see there is nothing within this, this page. This simple reason why I have it as a page is so that I can search it more easily. And you can see that in action, like I said, where I demo crafting evergreen notes. So let's go back and take a look at the maps of content. The, it contains the sub blocks, which are those evergreen notes that are related to a common theme or idea, the parent of evergreen notes, and it's the child of the keyword. So it really is just kind of a folder within the system, providing some structure to help me be able to find notes based on a theme. So I can drill down to find things more easily rather than having to just always search. It also allows me to get to give me an overview of related topics very easily within my system. So if I look at personal knowledge management design, I can very easily see all the notes that are related together in one place to see if a new literature note wants to develop an idea that I already have or needs to be created as a brand new idea. So this is giving me a bird's eye view of all those notes that are related together. Now, the next one, taking a step in, is the fleeting note. And the way that I use these is in crafting those evergreen notes. Rather than processing literature notes and immediately diving in and trying to craft that crystallized thought, I have a fleeting note section in the evergreen note, which is a free space to write and develop my ideas while I'm crafting. So it is just a bunch of blocks. They're all plain text. It's just a mean, a place for me to be able to do some messy writing and thinking. And it's a child of those evergreen notes. So if I look at this block here that lives within this evergreen note, you can see that I have fleeting notes as just a child of that one. And then I can just do all my messy kind of writing and thinking here before I start trying to crystallize it as an evergreen note. So if we go then on to note type number six in the system, that is the evergreen notes. This is the meat of the system. All of the other note types are really here to support the building of these crystallized thoughts and ideas that I can remix, reuse, that I can develop into more stable thinking. So these are structured as blocks with a link to an empty page. Just as you can see here, this page has nothing in it. And the reason being to help being able to search, it's easier to search for pages than it is for, for blocks. See that in action in my my other video, and it contains a lot of information. It contains potentially block references to other evergreen notes, so I can link evergreen notes together to be able to move between similar ideas. It also can contain actionable info, insights, personal observations, follow-up actions, additional context and summary, tag notes, which I'll, I'll talk about in a second, and then it contains those literature notes and fleeting notes that helped build the evergreen note. It's contained within those maps of content, kind of a hierarchical structure, and then it has the, the fleeting and literature notes as, as children of itself. So you can see in this example here, the tag note that it's related to some actionable info, some pulling in some quotes from, from elsewhere to be able to use as additional context here, a personal observation, and then these supporting documents. So everything that went in to kind of creating this evergreen note is contained within this block, as well as pulling in links from elsewhere around my digital mind. This is where kind of the, the magic happens. Most of the time is spent 
is in these evergreen notes. And then the last type of note that I have here are these tag notes. So they provide reference to established concepts or people, whereas evergreen notes are claims, ideas that I am developing. These are more reference to things such as here, you know, uh, the sunk cost fallacy. That, that isn't my idea. It's a well-established thing, but I can use it as well as a, another layer of linking things together around common concepts. So if I open up the sunk cost fallacy, I can see some information here around what it is, a link to some source material for some more information. But I, when I use these in the evergreen notes, I can see on this page all the linked references to other ideas that it might relate to. So it's another way for me to explore my digital mind and make connections between notes based on these ideas that these concepts that might uh, all be related together. And so it's, it's the child of those evergreen notes. So that is the seven different types of notes that I have within my digital mind. Hopefully I did a good job explaining of what they all do and more importantly, why they exist. They exist for a purpose to serve. They aren't just there as kind of fluff or to, to look good. It needs to have a purpose to exist within the system and it, it does its job to be able to enable me to spend most of my time in that evergreen note stage crafting those crystallized thoughts and ideas. So thanks for watching. Let me know down in the comments below if you have any questions, comments, queries, inquiries, if you found anything useful in this video, and I will see you all next time. <music>